coordinated, I'll never hear the end of it. Oh, I'm colorblind. We, That's my problem. We are on. <laughs> okay. All right, let me call this to order. This is, uh, I didn't see an agenda. Mm -hmm. This is um, <clears throat> November 5th. We're the New Market School Board. Uh, we are meeting at 5.30 in a budget work session. But before we do anything else, our agenda speaks to the fact that at our last meeting in October, we uh, <clears throat> accepted the resignation of Gail DeRosha Wentworth. We appreciate the service that Gail has given over the last two and a half years to the school board and our community. And in our discussion that followed immediately thereafter, uh, around the table there was consensus that Kimberly Shelton was um, crazy enough to have put herself on the ballot <laughs> and, uh, and but for two or three votes would be here with us for the last few months. And if she were interested, we'd have her join us to fill out the uh, remainder of this uh, board year. The uh, seat vacated by Gail was a three-year term that's expiring this March. And so by, by policy and by statute, it would be on the ballot anyway. So uh, we talked about that. And moments later, Kim joined us. And we really appreciated that. But we need to make it formal. So tonight, right now, I would accept a motion from someone to uh, appoint Kimberly Shelton to fill that vacancy until the election in March. So moved. Seconded. Any discussion? Perfect. With a motion from Mr. Kennison, a second from Ms. Uh, McKinney. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. We're unanimous then. Uh, and having said that, uh, the school district clerk, Penny Botterman, is with us. And uh, if she'll do the honors, we'll swear Kimberly in, and then we'll get to work with a budget work session. Thank you. Okay, Kim, let's raise your right hand. Do you, Kimberly Shelton, New Market, do solemnly swear that you will bear faith and truth allegiance to the United States of America and the state of New Hampshire and will support the Constitution thereof? So help you, God? I will. And do you, Kimberly Shelton, do solemnly and sincerely swear and affirm that you will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all duties incumbent on you as school board member according to the best of your abilities, agreeable to the rules and regulations of this Constitution and laws of the state of New Hampshire, so help you, God? I will. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Hey, hey. Did she include the part about coffee? <laughs> we always forget that part. <laughs> Her name tag is all set and in place. That's great. Thank you guys very much for making that happen. Penny, thank you, thank you for joining us. Okay, so we have two things on the agenda between now and the normal board meeting or the regular board meeting at 7. First is uh, to, uh, to take a swing at whatever elements of the budget we can get through in the next 45 minutes or so. Dr. Mark Joyce of the New Hampshire School Administrative Association will be joining us right about 6.15 to review his uh, study that has been uh, delivered to us recently. So I'll turn it over to Christine. And, and the gang, and you guys tell us what, what we're going to talk about first. So good evening. We're going to talk about the uh, proposed FY17 budget. And with me tonight, we have principal um, from the elementary school, Sean Pine. And we have our director of technology with us as well, Jason Carey. Um, so we're here tonight um, to answer any questions that you may have about um, the proposal. So what we're going to do is we're going to just be starting off with discussing the elementary. Um, so if you could all turn to page nine, that's where I'm going to begin. Um, and so what you have on the left hand side is a summary by function to give you um, an overview. And then you also have it by object. Um, and just um, to try to keep with time, I'm going to just begin with the object breakdown. And then we'll kind of go through page by page and answer any questions that you may have. Please feel free to stop me at any time if I may skip over something. Um, that you'd like me to address or um, Jason or Sean to address at any time, okay? So the first one at the bottom um, is salaries. You can see the salaries are down um, $74,000, um, and that's large and partly due to the staffing changes that we have had. 
Um, benefits are down seventy-three thousand. Uh, I mean, sorry, eighty-eight thousand dollars. There, seventy-three thousand of that is roughly just due to health insurance changes, and then some of the other um, changes that we have. Um, some of our benefits are dental. We have an LTD. We have a life policy and things of that nature, which are all part of the contractual um, obligations that we have. The Contracted services is down, and that's just um, minimal of $1,300, and that's just due to some technology um, redesigning with services. The one I do want to talk and spend a little bit of time about is, um, which is a good thing, is the, excuse me, it's, is increased, is the property sir, purchase, I always get this, it's like a tongue twister, purchase property services, and that's the 400s, and that's up 25000 and that's largely due to the fact that we um, put a brand new modular at the elementary school two summers ago now. And so what we did was in the first year, um, we didn't have a, the means of funds because the, the modular got, um, uh, I don't want to say the word, but um, it was deemed um, that we couldn't occupy it in March or April that year. So we didn't have it budgeted. So we used impact fees in the first year to pay for the modular. The second year, we stepped it up and did half, mod half impact fees and half general fund. And this year, you can see the difference um, is roughly 29,000. So you can see the difference there is to make up for that modular payment. So now the third payment of the modular and going forward through the remainder of the five years will be fully funded by the general fund. Okay, so that's the change there. Um, minimal changes in the um, other purchase property services. Supplies, um, that's not a direct relation to supplies when you think of instructional supplies. That's not paper, that's not consumables, it's not that nature. The 600s also represent fuel. Um, and so the fuel was is down currently um, by $30,000. I know some of you may not have been here in March, but in March we actually locked into a contract with Hanscom Fuel Oil, um, and we saved a dollar five a gallon. So um, us and the town both did that. So you can see that um, savings there, and we did have to increase the gallon, the cost per gallon, because we know the gallons are going to go up, but we don't know. So we're a little aggressive with that. Um, with that figure, but the fallback is if we were to go back to a dollar five, we do have the capital reserve, um, utility capital reserve trust fund to tap into if we needed to. So we do have a lifeline there. And then lastly, the equipment is up. That's um, at the elementary, so that was for some iPads, um, I, uh, iPads, the cart, some Chromes, and some other technologies throughout the budget. Okay, so that's the overview. So these objects go throughout the entire elementary budget. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so I'm just gonna move on. So typically what we've done in the past is I'll review kind of not line, not every single line item, but I'll kind of give you the highlights of what I think on that page that might really stand out. Um, so the first one is the 1101-112, which is the salaries, um, they're contractual. We have 35 teachers, and it represents a 34.4 um, FTE. One of the teachers is grant funded, including benefits. Um, we have the implementation of the full day kindergarten, and due to the higher population, um, higher pupil to teacher ratio, excuse me, um, we have hired a paraprofessional to each of the four kindergarten classes. Okay, so that was part of the Warren article that you saw um, last March. We have two different sublines. We do it for the teachers. We also do it for the paraprofessionals, and we also break out long-term subs. Long-term subs is not something that we budget, but we show it so that way there's a different there's a difference between a daily sub, short-term sub, and a long-term sub. Long-term subs are here typically for a longer uh, duration, um, so and they get compensated at a higher rate because they are taken over for a teacher position and have more responsibilities um, in terms of doing uh, the normal routine a teacher does, a full-time teacher does. So moving on, then we have our supplies and um, we always, you'll see the redundancy in every function. So we have supplies and we have equipment, we have furniture and those things. Um, there's really not too many changes. We have a lot of ins and outs. Most of it is due to reallocation 
not additional requests. Um, because this budget is a level program budget, which means we remained all programs were the same. We've not changed our programs. We've not increased programs or decreased programs. And we're almost a level funded budget from the prior year with adding the Warren article in there. That gave us the difference. So you can just kind of see the money's short here, but makes it's made up in other places. Okay. So turning the page. Before you leave, page sure. 10, just, um, skimming around but go back to teachers for a second 35 teachers there yep I've got 29 classroom five at each grade level plus four at the kindergarten level that's 29 help me bridge the gap between that and 34.3 FTEs I got art music PE computers a computer teacher yeah do special ed teachers come underneath that heading no that? nope so we've got um, we've got computer We've got physical ed, music, art. I have two, four, five fifth, four fourth, five thirds, five. Um, two, four, five thirds, four, 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 four seconds. <laughs> it's getting hard. Uh, three. Well, these might be moved around because I don't track them like you do. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so then I would have three first, but I think someone's moved, and then I have four kindergarten. And I have my one-two, so I have two one-two teachers as well. Yep. So 34.3 FTE. 35 bodies. Okay. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. The one thing I will add to that is um, <clears throat> the Warren article had also asked for additional um, personnel to help with the four-fifths. Um, in the uh, in the specials so one of the creative things that um, that Sean has come up with is that instead of having and hiring a four-fifths teacher that we've implemented the stipend so contractually the teachers contract says if a teacher teaches a sixth period you'd give them a twenty five hundred dollar stipend that is what the model currently is right now it's early in the game to see but we will be reporting back to the board and see how that turns out but that's the model that we've implemented going forward with the FY 17 so we'll keep you abreast of any changes that may have All right. can I just ask so I see our supplies are going down textbooks are going down is are the textbooks going down because of the purchase of the iPads and Chromebooks do you want to answer that or do you want me uh, that's part of it and also there isn't per se like prescribed text that we assign kids right because, for instance, in math, we use a lot of Mahesh Sharma uh, implementation along with everyday math. So it kind of balances out the everyday math program that we have. We've had it in place for a long time. So a lot of stuff you get through them, you can reproduce. Teachers can reproduce okay. it with a, a photocopier. So that's why you're seeing that kind of dip a little bit. All right, thank you. Yep. yep. Just recounting my people just to make sure. <laughs> Okay, Any, anything else on page 10 before we move on? So on page 11, um, again, you're just seeing some um, staffing changes with um, the professionals, which is the teachers, and again with the paraprofessionals. Um, really no other big changes there. You're seeing some additional ins and outs, new equipment for um, special education because um, you can see that last year the actuals for the new equipment for special ed was 25,000 that was to um, we were able to keep um, some children in-house um, and get some additional equipment to modify their IE IEP plans um, and so we just have an additional request there again to keep um, abreast of the needs of those students um, so here again, um, the teachers, we have a total of eight special education teaching positions, um, which include two preschool special educator teaching positions. Um, and that, and we also have, that line also includes the special education coordinator, uh, which is a K2, K through 12 position. Um, so the expenses for that position are um, allocated over the elementary, the middle school, and the high school. Um, and so in this particular case, uh, 0.6 of the FTE is charged to the elementary school. 
Um, we currently have 25 um, paras in the building as well, um, and they are all full-time paras. Um, and then again, so the substitutes um, for both of those uh, classifications are there, and um, the supplies, equipment, and so forth. Moving on to page 12. Um, one of the items that I'll point out there, if you look at the difference, it's 18,000. Um, that is just changes in, in staff and the tutors. We currently have, um, f we have eight tutors total. We have five reading and three math, of which two are grant funded. Um, the account uh, for 1410113 is to provide for co-curriculars. Um, so that's your chorus and the course assistant, student council, um, drama, Lego club, and things of those that nature. So um, sometimes that, that account can get fully utilized, but if there's not um, participation levels, some of the um, programs don't get um, implemented. Um, same thing with the, uh, I'll call them athletics, the jump rope and <coughs> archery and things of those natures as well. We also have homework club. Um, you can see just a small change there just due to um, the need for participation in the programs. It's just down slightly. Any questions on that page before I go ahead? On page 13, we have um, one guidance counselor that serves the needs of the um, elementary school. Uh, we also have one nurse. Um, we, have, we provide for substitute for a nurse if um, there is a need for an absence due to illness or um, personal leave. We have um, equipment line, um, so and we also have equipment repair. So you can see it's up a little bit because some of our equipment is um, a little outdated and due to the needs of some of the children in the building, um, utilization um, is really taking a toll on the equipment. So would that be something that you'd be looking for is purchasing new equipment? Right. For instance, uh, my nurse has, uh, I don't know what you call it, has an audio meter to test hearing. Yeah. We try to get it repaired. It's 25 years old. I was say, it's got they said they, they don't even make parts for them, so we had to replace that. And one of those, for instance, is about $1,000. So, yep. Unfortunately, some of the equipment that we have in place is starting to reach its capacity in, in, in terms of its lifespan. Um, moving on, we have um, for speech, we have um, two speech um, therapists in the building, um, and they work with um, children throughout the, the building. We also have a, um, an OTPT, and we also have a occupational therapist, um, which is a 1.4 FTE position. Um, on page 14, I would just like to point out um, at the top there, this year um, we have implemented a, well, let me back up. Last year we had a full-time librarian in the district and we had, a, we had two paraprofessionals, one at each building. And through the budget conversation, we talked about utilizing two full-time librarians, one in each building and eliminating the paras. So you can kind of see in the accounts, one's down, one's up. They're just offsetting each other um, because we've implemented that. So that was uh, something I just wanted to bring to your attention. Um, and then no big changes in um, on page 14, just some technology ins and outs. Um, that's the technical contracted services I mentioned earlier under the objects is that it's just slightly down um, and some minor equipment um, requests that are up. If you want specifics, I'd be more than happy to touch new equipment with you if you'd like. Um, if we just flip to page 15, um, the justification under the 2231-730 um, talks about how we will use those funds. Um, again, it's for the iPad Airs and the carts um, and some dot cams, headphones, um, and some classroom speakers. You can see that the replacement equipment's down, um, but if you flip back, you'll see that um, the new equipment is up. So again, just some reallocation of some money throughout. Yep. 
<clears throat> hit me with document cameras that need carts. Are these not like an Elmo? These are something bigger, something different. Um, no, it's still small, but um, but there's more than the two. We're not buying two dog cams and put them on a cart. We must have a bunch of them already from previous years. Is that? We do have some uh, inexpensive ones we yeah. purchased a few years back, which were kind of a Don't flop. Um, so the plan for this year would be to try a few different brands, okay. a few different makes, models, test them out, more of a pilot. And uh, I got to say, it's. I mean, you're seeing it in the school, and your teachers have. If someone was taught, you've talked about it in years past, or someone has, but there's nothing quite like a group of kindergartners, first grade, second grade, even fifth grade, who can sit at their desks and see everything the teacher is doing because the camera propels it through the projector up on the screen instead of jockeying for position and fighting with your your classmates the whole time to try to get the best vantage and that's you know especially for any experimentation any science <coughs> element i mean it certainly with sometimes with the manipulators we're using for math things like that it's just such a great tool so good a lot of the newer document cameras like you you, you talked about science you can actually get a lens to fit in so it acts like a microscope, microscope. projecting microscope so if you're doing an activity where they want to see cells or something on that line you can set that up and as long as they're stained they're going to show right up on the screen so you can point out certain things to the kids and they can see those differences it's pretty it's, amazing so yeah. we do want to play with, around with that I had a few teachers interested but I also don't want to buy a whole sweeping thing and see a bunch just sit and collect dust right. sit and collect dust well too. Once they, I mean, I hope it catches on. You know, once, once you see, once you see two or three exactly. of your peers doing it, like, whoa, that's a whole lot better than my kids fighting for space. That's, yep. And so, so there's great things. Go ahead. So with the purchase of the three more smart boards, how many smart boards would we have at the elementary school then? I don't, I'm trying to remember how many we bought. We only have two there right now. Two mounted. We, we one was on a mobile, yep. but it didn't get a lot of use because every time you bump them around, you have to recalibrate them. People are having difficulty. So I actually put that into the media center at Jason, put it into the media center okay. for us. Um, we want to get, I have some teachers who would express they would really like to have right. a smart board. So I'm trying to honor that request. And again, let's try a few, get right. people interested, and then hopefully we can get that interest to carry on to other teachers as well. Hey, I don't, I, I've been a as an employee, I've been a roadblock. I've been a real pain in the butt about primary grade, K1s and 2s, um, because there's always a push. You know, 5's got it, 4's got it, 3's got it. Why don't I have it? Uh, I'll be really curious. I, I'm not opposed in general to the smart board concept with the younger grades, but when they become a TV set, I've wondered. More <laughs> importantly, when you mount them on the wall and the kids can only reach the first third of it, sure. it's two-thirds right. that they're not interacting with. And yeah. So I'll be curious to see what you guys do. I'm, I'm not suggesting you shouldn't mount them in a K or a one or two, but I'll be interested to get the feedback because my feedback has been limited and it's been a little bit, you know, antagonistic. <laughs> because, you know, as the money guy, I've been kind of in the way of that. But right. I'll be interested to see where you put it and how the teachers do because um, I've seen it pretty pervasively used and some use it with every lesson. Exactly. They spend their lives building new lesson plans so that everything can be on that smart board. And then others that, yeah, they just kind of, so I appreciate your Yeah, and your I've, seen, I've seen teachers use them in, yeah. for uh, like lunch. Are you gonna have hot lunch today? And your names are up on the thing and you, kid walks over, puts his finger on the name and clicks it over to, yes, I'm getting lunch. And moves up. And that sort of thing, yeah, so. It's a lot about student engagement. And so yeah, the and more you can engage them. Right, right. We do right. have one in, what is it, preschool or? We have one in kindergarten, uh, kindergarten that's. It's two feet off the ground. So, so you mount yeah, it down. You can well, lower so yeah. they so can get to it. So you fix that problem. Yeah. That was my, one of my concerns. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, thank you. That's awesome. Um, just so some, some highlights, um, we have one principal um, and we have one assistant principal. Um, we have two secretaries that are full-time. One is a 230-day um, contract, and the other one is 260. Um, really no changes in terms of equipment and postage and printing and all those things are pretty um, level there. Um, one thing I, well, two notes I want to just make sure that I reiterate, um, because we did when we, I did the review. Um, keep in mind that when we go throughout the entire budget that we are in um, year three of a three-year contract with the teachers. So therefore, um, the teachers' um, salaries are all status quo until we reach a successor agreement. Um, and the classified staff, um, they have received a step, um, but this year we did no change to the grid. 
Um, so we, what that means is we didn't do a percentage increase to the step and track this year like we've done in the past. So everybody will just get their step. Um, but what we needed to think about was we have um, 22 people that are at the top of the step, which means if we didn't do that percentage increase and those folks would not get a raise. Um, so what we did for those 22 is we, um, we have a side note that says that they will get a 2% increase um, to the raise so that everybody has a share in that. So um, moving on to page 16, um, you can just see we have, um, we have two full-time custodians, um, one part-time position and one head custodian. Um, we also have um, substitutes there. Um, water and sewer um, is slightly down. Um, repair and maintenance um, is slightly down. Um, you're seeing some um, electricity, um, fuel oil, like I mentioned earlier, is down 30000 because we um, are locked into a contract for next year um, and so forth. Um, transportation monitor, um, we had two, we're down to one, um, things of that nature. So, And you can see that I put the, uh, the average use of our fuel oil over the three years is also decreased. And we can contribute that to, um, we also put a brand new automation, controls automated system into the elementary school last summer. Um, so we're reaping the benefits on both the fuel consumption and the electricity. Page 17. Um, so for those of you who've been with me for a couple years, we originally had all the benefits um, throughout the entire um, packet and so that ended up being like a 60 something page um, document and so what we've done um, per um, the request we had a committee that met and we took some feedback and we've consolidated all the benefits so now all the benefits in each section are broken down into the 2900s um, so you can kind of just see the sick day buyback um, we have an insurance buyout we have health insurance dental life and I won't read them all but you can kind of just go through and just see where we are um, the two that I will point out is, again, the health insurance is down $73,000. Um, and then the very last line is the modular <coughs> unit because, like I mentioned earlier, we phased it in. So now we've got the full modular payment of the $59,000 um, in the budget. And so we'll have two more years after this year because it's a five-year deal. Um, we For the health insurance, um, we currently have um, a projected um, increase of 5% next week, um, roughly around the 12th, we are hoping to get the final number, um, what the GMR is. So that number could change. I will tell you the good news is we did get our dental rate between the last time I printed this and the dental is, um, it's a 0% increase. So what you'll see is as soon as I get the health insurance rate, I'm going to make an adjustment. Um, so I will make the adjustment for the dental and I'll also make the adjustment for the health. And we'll start from there. Is your 5% placeholder on health your own, or is that something that you got from school care? That is my own. Okay. So we haven't even gotten the GMR yet. That's what will be next week. So, um, and, the re and the where I came up with the 5% is uh, this is our second year with them. The first year um, we had a 5.9% increase, and last year we had a 5.1%. So um, we're hopeful that we can remain in that arena. Okay. A couple of, I wish Dr. Martin was here. Um, first comment is, um, I think in the future, uh, decisions relative to salary increases and so forth should come before the board so we can discuss them. What do you mean? Um, you talked about um, increasing people a certain percentage above the top step. I think those are discussions that the school board ought to be having. It's, it will come to you. When we, we're in negotiations right now. I'm no, talk, he's no, talking I'm about the classified. About, this is, this yeah, in about, the past, yeah. this is oh, typically. And I think, I mean, we can certainly change it now. No, you can no, change it. No, 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 no. But, but it's, a I, tough, it's tough to cycle. The, the last couple of years, I've said the same thing. We get to this point, the grid's already been done, it's in the budget. You think, when are we going to have a conversation about steps? Yep. Uh, steps that are at 4% or 3% or 2% or yep. you can, could we change it? What would it take to change it? I, we need to have some, and part of it is some of that conversation <clears throat> that we have probably deserves feedback from the people that would be impacted by it. 
if we, you know, if it's not in the budget season, we could all year we could be talking about that. Right. Yeah. My my point is a decision to n increase the steps two percent, but not a general increase, should not be a surprise to the board. Right. Of the non-union employees. Yeah. The second, the in the, yeah, the, the the happier note um, is if you go back to page nine on object salaries. Christine, that's everybody's salary. That's all the salaries in the elementary. Yeah. So you got three million eight in 2014. Yep. 2015. You're proposing three million nine in 16, 17, which looks great um, because last year we approved four million oh four one. Correct. My assumption is that the reason that that's going down is we're losing more senior teachers and that's replacing correct. with less senior. That's correct, which is having a, a net reflect on the health insurance because they're still right. on their parents' insurance, which is a great thing. <laughs> right. Um, so that's a that may be a somewhat of a blip, but I got it. So um, when you do the the three uh, the two, uh, salaries for the. 2016 2017 at three million nine six seven that does not include negotiated increases correct there will be a separate warrant article with all the just with all the um, the benefits and everything shown right the associated it, FICA in retirement right yeah. and is the three million nine six seven the result of your adding up actual salaries it is current okay. salaries yep Good. so that's when when he asked me earlier I have this lovely you yeah. won't be able to read it but this is my this is my sheet and so what I do is I take current staffing and um, and if we had a contract I'd project them based on the step and track and if I don't it's status quo yeah, I think that's <clears> great because I think sometimes in the past we've taken the actual expense and goosed it up four percent nope we have this yep. and this this is this is perfect yeah. um, although alarming that because it could come around and hit us if we didn't have significant turnover good terrific thank you and the same thing on benefits 2014 actual is a million six yep um, you're proposing a million seven um, I forget how many people that is 32 or something <coughs> okay. that's that's great on a benefit increase yep including the five percent increase that's terrific correct good thank you I, one of the things you could do for me if i go back and review this and i think it'll be it'll be helpful for the whole budget and i i guess i asked the board if it's not relevant or valuable that's okay i would love to see completely redacted because although other communities like to put names with it I'm not interested in finding out what individuals make, but for instance, the 34.3 FTEs, mm -hmm. I would love to see how that breaks out in terms of um, how many bodies, you know, you said I got five of these and four of these and five of these and so on and so forth. Um, see how the fractionals play, and I'd just like to, I'd love to do that for the elementary, for special ed, for teachers. I'm not interested in paras, you know, but on the teachers, it would be interesting to look at um, and I think it would be informative for the you board. Have You've yeah. got, what's you that? have it. Oh, I have it. You right. have it for negotiations. Well, but um, <clears throat> it's also in the annual report. Well, the annual report is slightly different. Actually, by name. Yeah. And what I'm be looking at is I'd be looking at like here are K's, ones, twos, threes, fours, fives. So you want it broken out that way. And then, okay. well, I mean, you could sort it or whatever. But I, I don't want names in there. But I would love to see M30 step 10, M30 step 10, M30 step 10, because I think it would be useful for the board to say yes. Veteran, 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 woo, veteran, 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 you know what I mean? I'd like, and then, and then not only do you see the, the head count that adds up to this number, but you see, to Al's point, when we ask the question, is this a reflection of veteran teachers higher on the scale leaving and, and, and less experienced, uh, maybe less educated teachers who are earlier in their career coming in and they're being a delta in terms of the money? I think it would be helpful to see that. So do you want a scattergram or do you want a scattergram by building? I it, I would be I'm really looking for like a like a staff list without the staffing names. Do you know okay. what I mean? Like yeah. I'm just something yeah, simple. Yeah, I have it. So something simple like that. I know you do because you to put it That's together. You got it. it. So, and it doesn't have to be part of the packet. And it, I just think it would be informative. Want for me the to board. send it as informational? Yeah, I just can email informational so that we can okay. just go down through and 
and really any pains that you could or would like to take so that people can feel like this isn't about I've worked in communities where it feels like you go to the grocery store and it was like, ah, I know what you make. I don't want it to be like that. That's not the intent. It's in, in the aggregate to be able to look at it and have a sense of this is what our, our teacher, fa our, our faculty looks like in terms of their experience, their education, so on and so forth. What is going to be, how do you want it broken down? Do you want it by degree, years of experience? You want it by building? You want it by position? I, I would tie it to the accounts so that you, you can say, oh, here's the 34 okay, so and a half that are over here okay. and here's the eight that are over here and, you know. Well, help to understanding test scores, yep. things like that, so that we can go back and say, your test scores went up. Here are all your seniors. Here are our newbies. I, I do. I like. I like the idea a lot. It's just a something we can. And it's a splash. Year. I mean, it's a moment in time because yeah. that changes mm -hmm. because yeah, they continue mine's to be educated. Change. They change track and step. You know, they change um, degree uh, in uh, educational uh, accomplishment that way. And then we've got a fair amount of coming and going, but it still would be just salaries. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. want to make sure I get oh. your. Full yeah, and because and that number really, there's a lot of roll-up stuff that's included in this in terms of. You don't have to break out the this component of the salary and this component component of the salary. I'm just looking for show me that there's veterans and there's newbies and show me what the value of that position is. Okay. You know what I mean? You know, con combined. But, um, just make sure I understand. So yeah. it's going to be elementary school. Um, teacher Ele no no name no, name. no names it's going to say 10 years of service it's probably going to say kindergarten there'll be four of them and it'll say right. Here, bachelor's, it bachelor's <laughs> plus 15 with step three there bachelor's plus four four and a dollar amount and that's yeah. in the years of service which the year the step if somebody never taught anywhere else and they walk in here at step oh, one, then it would be the years of service. If they taught 10 years somewhere else and then came in here, you, or if they're at the top of the step and they've been there for 18 years and they're a 30-year veteran, you won't know that necessarily because oh. it's just the step that shows. I don't know if you've got years of experience I that do. you could dump. So No, I have it. So what it will say, I'll leave all the col columns so you can find it. So it's going to say the 1101-112, which you can match to the budget, and it's going to say the FTE. Then it's going to say the total salary, and it'll say appropriated salary, okay? Because yeah. there's a difference between total and appropriated, and then it'll also say grant funded, okay? So you'll know what's grant funded, um, and then it's it will have new market longevity, yep. number of years in new market. It will have longevity, number of years of service of experience, step 15, and then if there's any stipends. Perfect. Okay. Wow. Okay. That's great. great. So that's exactly what my well, sheet is. So you, you can match it all. <laughs> 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 I'm, all I was saying. All I gotta I, do is hide a column. I don't want anybody to feel like we're with, like there's any intent to to identify individuals because no, it's really because just this is random. It's not alphabetical. Good, it's good, not good. anything. Good. So that's great. Any other questions? We're our next team is uh, our next present presentation is upon us. That's the elementary. Maybe we could spend the next four or five minutes talking about the plan for the budget moving forward. Unless there's any other questions about the elementary. Just, just one question on, yeah, on, that, on that chart we were just talking about. I don't know if, if while we're at it, it might make sense to find out where we are as compared to, you know, other districts. I think that's a different study that needs to be done. You know, just just yeah. to, I mean, I think it, I think it somewhat relates, you know, are we... On the classified? Yeah, are we on par? And, yeah. just, you know, maybe, you know, as, as another column, if you will, what's the delta or what's, what's for that position where, you know, just so... We have it all laid out. See if we're in the okay. where we should be. Yeah, it's a great idea. A lot of this for me goes to somebody's going to look me in the eye because they always do and ask me, "Did you did you really understand that number?" And I'm thinking, yeah, well, I mean, it's 38 people, but when you see this, you can't help but feel like you're more credible because you say, I, "I don't necessarily know who those people are, but I don't need to know who. I just know that these are real positions, paid at this level for this per, for this job." So. I think that's great. I'd, I'd just comment, um, having worked with salary surveys, that if you put a salary survey that says custodian, you've got to make sure the jobs are the same. Yeah. And very often they're not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If and you the total have package. Right. If you have secretary, very it's a secretary to who, to whom, is it whom? Yep. Whom. Yeah. So I'd, I, if we want to do a salary survey, which I think we should, mm. I'd recommend we do one. And, and have it done as a, as a concentrated effort. Yeah. 
The, the, the only reason why I raised that is that was uh, something that the JAC covered, but they covered it in general. So I couldn't tell, you know, are we on par with our, you know, um, with other districts with our, our long tenured teachers? You can't tell from those numbers. I mean, it's just one number in the JEC report, and we're, and, we're, and we're lower than some other districts, higher than some other districts as well. But this one number may be misleading. You know, we, we may be, you know, but I, that's not a conversation we need to ha have today. But it just it just, it just stood out me when I read that in the JEC report. Yeah. Hmm. So, we, and we only have the one union. Right. Right. So, right. So our teachers are, are a collective bargaining group that we're negotiating with them now. Uh, and she just said, you know, there's, you don't see any increases in their salaries in here because it'll all be in that separate one article. Mm -hmm. But everybody else that works in the district is outside of a union relationship right now. So we have schedules and scales. But I think as, we, as you talk about, the state will give us good information. They have it available to give you a sense of how we compare collective bargaining wise to other right. to other teacher groups um, but pulling custodians and secretaries and food service and things like that it's that you, you got to look a little bit to make yeah, sure you've got the, apples to apples you know, counting staff yeah. uh, personnel you know so absolutely okay yeah if you want to we'll just take one minute and say right now we are scheduled for I don't know Can I put it on here six o'clock we're scheduled at six o'clock a week from tonight on the 12th and you're going to attempt to do the rest of the budget that night. So is that fair? Because we need to make up for the SAU. So we're, so we're going to present the SAU and the junior senior and the high. Junior senior high. And then any other elements that we want. When is that? That's next Thursday, a week from today at six. It's yeah. not a regular meeting. It's only a budget session. I think you know we could plan on two to three hours. Go to it's six, six to eight or nine. And it's on the calendar. And it's on. Uh, yeah. So we, yeah. we'll do that, and that'll be here, I think, in chambers. Uh, I, I didn't confirm that, but I think it's here. And then we're scheduled to turn around and be back here Saturday morning, the 14th at 9, which will be more reflective. You know, that yes. will be our, our opportunity to take a swing, talk about things that we like or don't like, want to make changes or what have you, uh, and hopefully come close to adopting a number because. On the 19th. Uh, on the 19th, uh, yeah, on the 19th, we'll, we'll try to, based on everything we do on Saturday, we'll come back the next Thursday night. And uh, and hopefully take final motion so that she can prepare it to go to the budget committee on the nineteenth. Yeah, potentially. When when are they looking to hear it? They yeah. have to have it. They always get it that December. Monday. Okay. And then I Great. go to the meeting on <coughs> December ninth. Uh, December seventh. Hey, you guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for thank coming. You very much. Yeah. So please let me know if there's something in particular that just because we're pressed for time, I try to give you. Looks good. Quick but version. You're in good shape. That looks really good. I think Jason, there's a lot are you of able information to join us in here. On the but if there's not something in there that you want. I'll try to summarize early on. Next right. one, so just send me an email and I'll have it prepared so that way. Thank you. Thank you. Sean, thank you very much, sir. Sean, thank you guys for coming. Appreciate it. Appreciate the support. How are you? It's not. No, it's kind of wrong. I'm kind of hot. Do you, I don't know. Did you get one? I'm sorry. Uh, <coughs> They probably don't have the uh, no. ace, the uh, heat adjusted for 70 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's odd. Okay. Hi, Elizabeth McKinney. Hi, Elizabeth. Nice to meet you. Yeah, hi, Dr. Joyce. Hi, Dr. Joyce. Hi, Dr. Joyce. Hi, Dr. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello, Kim Shelton. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Elsa. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, hi. Christine Blue and Dizzle. Nice to meet you. Elsa. Nice to meet you. Elsa. Elizabeth McKinney, nice to meet you. Kim Shelton, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, Mark. You get the corner seats. I need you. Thank you. Are you? Are you serious? Yes. Exactly. Hey, gentlemen, the ca the cameras are rolling. I don't know if uh, he's got us live in town tonight or if this is just for tape tape okay. delay or for the mm -hmm. replay, but. Uh, for for uh, all of the benefit of those at home, I just want to say welcome. <coughs> I'm really glad that you guys are here. Uh, doctors Joyce, Ayers, and Glad. I'll let uh, Mark, who is the executive director of the New Hampshire School Administrator Association, make formal introductions uh, of yourself and your group. But uh, the, the, the document is before us. Uh, we've all had a chance to review it, I think. And we really appreciate the work and appreciate you joining us. So we'll, we'll spin it right over and let you have at it. Thank you, sir. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, again, uh, we appreciate the opportunity to work on behalf of the district. Uh, Nate has uh, introduced us all, but we represent New Hampshire School Administrators Association. We're a private nonprofit association that responds to individual school districts' RFPs for studies. This year has been particularly busy. We're doing eight different studies. So we're pleased that we're able to get this in and finish it on time for it to be useful to you. The report that you have, we also gave uh, Dr. Martin a copy of that, unbounded and white copy, as well as on a CD so it can be posted or shared or copied to your convenience. You retain ownership of that, and so it's copy written with that notion in mind. Our experience tells us that sometimes people like to grab pieces of documents offline rather than quote the whole source, so we try to protect it that way. On page two, there's a table of contents that kind of describes the study itself. I will not walk through all of those pieces, but highlight uh, some of the major ingredients. On pages three and four, you have a listing of the tables. We provided a complete listing of different tables that look at capacity assessments as well as building inventory. But in a nutshell, um, our scope of service was to provide a neutral look at the facility needs um, as a way to just demonstrate is there a need or not. As we come to work on a study, we bring no preconceived notion about it regardless of whether others have studied it. But rather, first of all, try to understand the values of your school district, of your school buildings, and then how that projects into the space that you have. In this case, we were provided enrollment projections that were done for your district by NESDEC, and we use those as a basis of measuring your capacity versus your enrollment. So again, we have no interest in the outcome of the study other than to fulfill our obligations on the contract, um, but we don't gain anything by any recommendation that's made. The, um, we start with a, just a basic overview of the district. Again, that's very familiar to all of you, uh, but we do that because this document can be read by anyone, and we want to provide a full understanding of the community and the school composition. On pages eight, we walk through a timeline of the different tasks that we engaged in. We enjoyed very much meeting with your building administrators, your district administrators, touring your schools when they're empty as well as when they were full. We've been in all schools several times, saw them uh, gain a good understanding of their use at different times of day throughout the year. The enrollment projections that we use are on page 11 and that was the recommended table that was produced by NESDEC. That becomes useful a little later in the study when we compare it to your overall capacity. When we, let's first look at the elementary facility. That begins on page 11. It goes through a general description of the elementary program, and then a description of the building. As you're very familiar, uh, that building contains four portable classrooms and uh, we know that uh, they are in good repair and of full use right now but in terms of permanent structures um, they are not considered eligible for building aid as an example so what we did for you was project the capacity of that school including the portable classrooms as well as excluding them uh, but first we had a look at the overall building strengths those are on page 12 and then we identified on page 13 uh, some of the challenges of that space. Again, that's not unknown to you at all, but perhaps folks in the public who haven't yet been there. The gymnasium is clearly undersized, as is the cafeteria there. Most notable requiring six different seatings for your lunch period and a very early lunch for many of the elementary children. There are some other uh, confined spaces. On the bottom of page 13, we project that building's capacity using your own class size guidelines, including the portable classrooms. As a general formula, I'll just note this once. For each of the schools, 
we calculate that class size times the number of learning spaces, but then we multiply that by 0.95 in the elementary case, 0.85 at the high school. Purpose for that is to allow for uh, odd size classes, group classes like multi-age grouping, and uneven cohorts of students moving through school. And that is an industry standard. At the high school, we also, the reason we use 0.85 is because often your program requires you to offer what are called singletons, courses for certain population, even though they may not carry 20 students you still, in order to meet the requirements, need to offer it. So the industry standard there is 0.85. Summary, when you use your class sizes and the portables, it becomes a capacity of about 549. If we were to eliminate those four portable classrooms, your capacity drops to 465. In both of those cases, you're at or beneath your current enrollment in those schools grades. I believe that you were, where do we refer to that, those numbers? On pages 13 and 14. Thank you. And then on 14 is when you uh, eliminate the portable classrooms. And then we also, as part of our RFP, promised 100% capacity, and that is what if your building was staffed using the largest possible class sizes allowable by New Hampshire guideline? And that's what you see in Table 4. You see there the capacity jumps significantly, but it also is assuming 30 students in every classroom from grade 3, it applies all the way through grade 12 and 25 in your preschool as well as first and second grade. Um, I would also note that the state standards has a note underneath that guideline to say all school districts are encouraged to strive for lower sizes, um, <laughs> as we all could imagine. Table 5 shows you the functional capacity again without the portable classrooms if you were to use the maximum state guideline. Table six is an inventory of all spaces, what they're used for to the best of our ability, identification of the room number using your current uh, known room numbering system, as well as an estimate of square feet for those spaces. And as I'm sure you're very familiar, the elementary school as a whole is a much newer facility than wings of the high school. So most of those rooms are actually built according to the state guidelines and specs. I'm very uh, pleased to see an early mentor of mine's name throughout that building, and that was at O'Connor. Uh, I was principal over in Epping when he was uh, principal at the elementary school. Now if we move on page 16, we begin to look at the junior-senior high, grades 6 through 12. Again, the uh, process is similar. We describe the unique programming. Here we broke it up in two pieces, one for the junior high and one for the high school, in that, as you know, while they share the same building, their instructional program and core offerings are slightly different. That progresses through as we describe the secondary level. And then we do an inventory of the junior high school space Realizing again it's one big building, but what space is being assigned to the junior high? What are its dimensions? And what would be needed if those were to be made according to the appropriate state guideline? And that's where you'll see a delta in that right-hand margin on table 7 on, on page 20, where what we identify as a deficiency are that the three lab classrooms used at the middle school level are all undersized and under-equipped in the sense of not having water uh, ability, wash sinks, and some safety showers that are typically in a, a standardized lab classroom. We also see a shortage of special ed place uh, classrooms because they're currently housed in available space, some of that as small as 215 square feet, small offices. Then on table eight, we profile the high school class spaces. Here uh, you note that there are a number that are in uh, 
normal size classrooms, but you have a whole wing of the building, the 1920 wing of that building, where the classrooms are significantly undersized. They range from 520 to five, 765 square feet. Again, you'll see here the delta in the right-hand column showing the need for new classrooms in place for English language arts, mathematics, four for English language, one for math, one for social studies, and one of the three lab classrooms at the high school is undersized. So again, that needs to be upgraded in order to meet current standards. Yes, sir? Um, when you went through the elementary school, you my sense was that you went through and you talked about our actual populations and the size of the room. Is this now referring to what the state would like to see those be? Well, it actually uh, does both for you because we have classrooms being used by student groups of various sizes, whether they're 20 or 25, that are substandard in size, wouldn't be approved as a classroom, period. And so what we've called out for you here is what capacity would be necessary in order to fit the enrollment that you have in your 9 through 12 level now and in the future that would meet the state standards. So it considers both aspects of it, your future enrollment as well as appropriate space. So it, it, it takes our projected enrollment and the state recommended size, Right. is that right? And what we started with with the high school and middle school because again that facility is in one big building the two <coughs> curriculums differ so we took their curriculum and program your curriculum and program and projected what kind of space it would need in order to exist what we knew is where it is now therefore what is needed in order to accomplish it and that's the right hand column um, we also did that on table 10 for your uh, shared spaces, that's table nine. Here, for example, we have art room. Currently, you do have an art room, but it's across the street. Uh, it's a renovated facility, as you well know. doesn't meet the current standard. The one that's in the building is undersized as well, so we call for one full-size 1,200 square foot art classroom. We also note below that if you wish to have one separate for the middle school, which is quite common, but not required by standard, you would need two classrooms. Computer spaces, so on. Gym obviously is of great shape and, and ample size for both schools, but their student support center activity is now in a very small room, 215 square feet, we call for one. We're confident that with these accommodated spaces, all of your future enrollments that you project will be handled as well as your program. What's different about that is, you know, secondary schools have uh, required offerings that not all kids take, but they elect in and out of them, but there are basic credit requirements. Uh, it's a little harder to work at than it is at the elementary where all students take the same thing because they're in a grade group. So again, sir, in answer to your question, this accomplishes both. It identifies your program needs, the available space you have, what is missing in order to meet your future 10-year enrollment that we understand from this document. Did that answer your question, sir? Based on projected uh, <coughs> enrollment. Correct. That's the key. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Can I maybe just highlight for public consumption, because folks will watch this and, and, and wonder when they see the document, you have not used the state standard as a hard and fast rule. Is that fair to say? Because, for instance, in, in a, a number of the spaces that you've just described at the junior and senior high school, you have essentially identified space, classroom space, that is smaller than the prescribed 900 square feet yes. and said it's within a margin of reason given the likely class sizes based upon the program that you understand us to have. Can you comment just briefly? I mean, That's an excellent point. Um, and perhaps I should preface it by saying we are naturally conservative people <laughs> and don't uh, wholesale call for new structures when they're not necessary. 
much of that junior senior high school is, is in quality building. It's undersized and there's clearly a wing that is outdated. Some of the infrastructure needs to be replaced. And so we'll note in our study several places where we identify that when you take the current, one of the current lab classrooms at the high school is undersized, but it's a thousand square feet. It's clearly large enough to be an acceptable classroom, although it's too small to be a lab classroom. And so we realize that true renovation, as well as addition, you're going to uh, seize and reuse right, right. a variety of good spaces that will no doubt fill the needs for your special ed spaces, perhaps other classrooms like that. And we know from when we finished our study, we were shared a copy of the work you've been doing with your architect right now. And I believe one of the designs we looked at when we were finished accomplish that because it did remodel a wing and reutilize that space more appropriately in a redesign. Okay. Thank you very much. If I could uh, just summarize perhaps by looking at page 28 with you and table 10 and 11. We try to pull together for you and the public kind of a summary. If you have your K-5 program and we use the capacity of the class sizes versus the enrollment that is present right here this year. You see that with the portable classroom use, you have a little bit of flexibility there to meet your guideline, but not very much considering the size of the population. To only have an excess of 16 out of 533 students. W without those classrooms, you'll see there's a significant shortage. So it's vital that you either maintain the four portable classrooms or replace them with new structure. Um, on table 11, we summarize what we see as the major structural deficiencies, that being that the gymnasium space is undersized and overutilized. The cafeteria and kitchen areas are simply too small. You need only identify and watch, and perhaps your kids have experienced the six different lunch periods in that building. Uh, the music room is quite crowded there. There are some minor renovations needed to your front entrance security, we believe, to make it more secure in today's practice. The pre-K classroom is slightly undersized. Uh, there's general uh, lack of storage as well as office space for your school nurse and the assistant principal. So our recommendations for that are certainly more modest than the high school, and that is to build a new gymnasium, convert existing space to an expanded cafeteria and kitchen and also see what kind of renovated space can be achieved from that change for school nurse and administration to improve the front entrance security and perhaps the administrative office space. Minor in comparison to those of the high school which is a much older building. Table 12 on page 30. General observations the classrooms in the 1920 wing are undersized and clearly inadequate for current instructional needs. That creates a need for additional rooms. The hallways themselves are undersized. Uh, when you measure the distance between locker on both sides, it's five feet. And code recommends that that be eight to 10 feet at a minimum. All three science labs in the junior high section and the biology lab at the high school are undersized without lab stations, and as I mentioned before, that includes water, but also safety showers where appropriate. High school art classroom is located across the street. The main entrance is confusing to say the least, uh, and makes it hard to uh, ensure security at that entrance. Our recommendation would be to build an addition that creates classroom space and lab spaces that part of that should be in the renovated wing or the replaced wing that's the 1920s wing to build a new art classroom for shared use but also if you uh, judge appropriate consider a second art room that would be dedicated simply for middle school use create additional special ed and bathrooms for staff and students improve the main entrance security and access and also a need when you uh, to improve the kitchen space. 
we, we close with some general conditions, and I'm sure those are familiar to you because you've been working on the issue of school construction that deal with the idea of connectivity, the importance of efficiency, of safety, use of color, and so on. Be happy to stop there and uh, open it up for any and all questions and call on my colleagues to add in if I should miss something or have missed something. Questions from the board? Well, this, first of all, Dr. Joyce, this is a... Uh, this was a uh, well-written, easy to understand. There's a lot in here. I read every word of it, but um, it's understandable to the layperson. So I appreciate that. I didn't find a typo in <laughs> the whole thing, so... You, whenever, you, obviously, you, whenever you run out 40 plus pages, you always got to be something. Yeah, yeah, that's a one indication of a good, good uh, document. But um, just just a couple of things, um, if I could, uh, on page uh, seven, um, uh, second uh, first full paragraph beginning the town's 2013 population. Um, you you put an adjective in there, interesting and relatively young mixture. Did you notice something there? studies and this year right now we're doing four that are simply demographic profiles what we're seeing on average statewide for example is that ages 19 and younger throughout New Hampshire are 18 or less in your case it's 26 percent um, also a, a, sm a shrinking uh, age cohort is 35 to 54 in your case that's a strong 31 percent so it points out a couple of things, perhaps some are obvious, that you have a generally younger average population than the state average, uh, which you know, maybe speaks to being in the southeast, maybe it speaks to the proximity to the university and how that census information plays out. Of course, those profiles are extracted from the last census, so that's 2010 information that we work from. Uh, but it was notable to us and interesting that there was a strong younger cohort. That could be why you're seeing a stable uh, elementary population. Um, and not unlike uh, some other communities we've looked at, but very few have that. Most of the ones we look at are shrinking. Not only are the school age population shrinking, but their preschool is shrinking as well. So it may signal that you're gonna hold your population of which I know you're judicious about constantly measuring that and, and checking it um, and uh, just to make sure that it doesn't spike up on you. Sure. Just uh, a related question, if I may. I just had a few, but um, uh, on page 8, um, the first number paragraph, it, um, uh, you, you use the NESDEC study, and that's the two th uh, December 14 study that the, um, that the JAC report refers to as well. And just a, I guess a broad question, are those good numbers and why? Is that something, do you, you typically rely on a NASDAQ no. uh, study? No, we're a competitor, Yeah. to okay. be quite honest. All so right. We do our own studies. I got you. And uh, so I would have no comment about their work. I don't understand uh, the background of their science. Um, but we, when we do it, we look at the community. We try to understand local planning initiatives, future initiatives type of housing sales, price of housing sales, as a way to try to identify it. Another unique characteristic of ours is we actually use GPS location to, sh to give you a map of your town with a dot for the resident of every child by grade. Mm -hmm. uh, why that, it's not only colorful and interesting to your transportation person, uh, but what it does identify for you is uh, where the groups of kindergarten, first, second graders are. Uh, and sometimes that can be very re revealing. In Epping, for example, a study we did about a year and a half ago, what it uncovered was the mystery of why they were having more kids show up at kindergarten than their birth numbers indicated significantly. And it turned out, I don't know if you're familiar with that town, but off Prescott Road, those giant apple orchards have developed to new houses. What happened is families moved in with young children already born. So they weren't part of the native population right. mix. They weren't born there, but they are waiting to come to first grade in mm -hmm. kindergarten. So that was visually a way to portray that to the community. So everybody does it a little different. We like our way, but yeah. we're a competitor to it. Okay. I mean, in, in looking at those numbers, I know you haven't done your own study. I think, I think you may have done one for the district back in 2010. Yes, we did. Yeah. Um, 
how do I ask this? D does this seem on on the target? Well, did you revisit those? We were. I did. Well, I, I can. I am can't. I looking for? Am I asking for a new proposal? Is that what's coming? I next? can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't speak to the Nesdaq study, but I can speak to the 2010 study. Um, in 2010, the uh, projected population for the high school uh, was 494. So you're on, we're only off by three percent. Um, at the elementary school, it's um, we had projected 603. So uh, it's a little off. It's 11 percent. It's well within a margin of error. Mm -hmm. uh, that was six years ago. Right. For for this year. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. One of the things, again, for public consumption, not not necessarily for you, gentlemen, but uh, one of the things that I think we talked about over the last year is. Uh, and you just spoke to it, the elementary enrollment seems to be hanging steady, even though there have been decreases at the junior senior high building, at the middle school and high school. And that seems, it's, it's left us wondering, uh, I, we've, had, we've made comments, of, have we not done enough, uh, have we not done enough exit interviewing with the population that's moving out to private schools or other alternatives? Uh, what can we do better to better understand where they're going? And it may not, it may be they're not going anywhere. I mean, I, it, there's other inter information that might be out there. That yeah. apply there. And, and, uh, but I think it's also one of the tickling ideas that comes to mind is that observation about your young cohort of students as an average to have 26% that are 19 or younger, higher than the average of, of schools, and also your relatively young overall population. Your secondary is no doubt impacted by the fact that you have available alternatives close by to you. Uh, in the sense of uh, parochial education, private education, whether it's a charter school or, mm -hmm. or a public or a Catholic school, not all communities are located in an area where that's an option. Thank you. Al's got a got a follow up. Um, I don't want to hog here, but I get oh no, three quick questions. Go ahead. Um, got some more and they kind of relate to each other. Um, the the facilities committee uh, visited some schools or a school that delivered food services in a very unique way, the, not the typical cafeteria sort of program. Um, are you familiar with some of the trends in that area? And the second one is, in, consistent with it, is really the future of education. One of the things that troubles me as a school board member is we're going to look around five years from now. We're not going to be delivering education or 10 years. We're not going to, I'm not an educator. I'm blowing this from no knowledge. But we're not going to be delivering education the way we are today. Um, can, you, can, you, can you give us some flavors of some things that are being done uniquely to well, look at? Well, our section of the general considerations there identifies four areas that we think are changing in the future. And we make those commendations about that. Obviously, one of those being technology and our ability to be able to not only engage in the technology in our instructional program, but have sufficient technology to allow for students to take courses at VLAX or other places inside which affect efficiencies for you. And we also know that assessment measures for students are moving to online assessment. I'm not familiar with what school you visited and their lunch program, but I know that um, you know, schools generally still have who are able to uh, secure a lunch room, prefer to have it cooked in the school, be able to take advantage of the Department of Agriculture's commodities program to be able to meet the needs of free and reduced students. Um, but there are some cases where school districts, rather than employ people themselves to do that, have uh, let out uh, RFPs for companies to come in and run them but they still need the kitchen facility inside of the school for the preparation. They need to meet public health ordinances as well as Department of Agriculture. So there are many companies like Cafe Services and others, I'm sure you are, uh, uh, Lenny is familiar with those, that have come into contract, but they still need the appropriate space for the preparation. I would go back 40 years when I was principal in Epping, and that time we didn't, and we satellited our food from another school through the building, uh, and it was horrible. I mean, it was so painful. Uh, not that the food was horrible, the people did the best they could, but the delivery and the cleanup and the care 
it was a big challenge to the instructional program because we literally moved through the school building to serve food. Uh, not many places do that anymore. My uh, last question, um, as we think about um, regionalization and efficiencies, um, we often have, the, or I often have thoughts about um, why doesn't, uh, why don't three communities get together and provide an art education center, like we, we do with technology, or, um, or uh, special needs students? Is there, is, there a, is there a way that we can get together and deliver special needs programs in a better way? Have you seen any of that kind yes. of? Yes. Uh, in fact, I was engaged with New Market over the years in the Seacoast Learning Collaborative, uh, where we shared operations uh, for low incidence, high needs, special needs students. That goes back to the 70s and 80s. Uh, that's been pressured, if you will, by the more um, modern practice of including all students in their resident school location. Uh, supported by federal law for that, but there's still shared services. Uh, there's also been cooperative purchasing done of materials that's been seacoast-wide at times. Um, in t there's some great examples of your collaborative work right now still, and that would be the Seacoast School of Technology and how you join together for that service. And I would also uh, call to mind the uh, Virtual Learning Academy, which is a statewide initiative now approaching 18,000 course takers, mm -hmm. and I know there are students from your school that take advantage of that at no cost. So there's an opportunity for your children as well as people in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, to take Manchurian Chinese free. It's not for all kids, but it's one of those good examples that we're sharing. So I think, sir, as you're smart to look to the future. I wish we all knew what it would be, but uh, I think if you follow the general trends of our recommendations about wireless connectivity and flexibility of space, you'll be well served by that. Thank you. And I, I think the Seacoast Learning Collaborative is something that we should uh, have staff comment on because I don't know, you must be, you must be paying a nickel or two. Mm -hmm. So we have students that are participating even today, mm -hmm. despite what Dr. Joyce said, that the trend in driving, uh, driving uh, the delivery of instruction more in the home district, or home you know the district of residence rather than at that facility. But it's in Brentwood, and so we do have one or more students that travel there every day for a, a program that is better served in that environment with all of their resources than here, you know, on our own. You may also still share in their transportation services too, as well. Mm -hmm. Mike had some others. Yeah. There was just a, there was a comment, I'm trying to, okay, page 31, it's uh, section 8, the, so the introductory paragraph, and I just want to make sure I understand what, what you mean by, it says, although restrictions inherent in the existing building may make it impractical to comply fully with a few of these features, we believe uh, each should be carefully considered in any new construction or significant renovation work. Um, doctor, what do you, what do you uh, mean by, um, Existing, it, it may be impractical in the existing building. Uh, that's really a deference uh, uh, to your architect. Mm -hmm. um, something, you know, certainly clean and clear when you're rent when you're creating new space from nothing. And so you can follow a spec for the needed square footage we mentioned earlier. However, you may need to find a practical compromise to create an 800 square foot classroom rather than a nine because that's the existing footprint you're working with in the renovation. I see. So I think what we're alluding to is that uh, we believe these efforts will make a significant improvement and meet all of your future needs. But you may not be able to follow the same clear template you would if you were building a building brand new. Bus loading and unloading areas with an overhang should be provided to protect students during inclement weather. We may or may not be able to create a carport for all students coming and going. but. But if you have but if that opportunity that's in new a construction, we absolutely. Thank you. I'm all set. Some of the questions I had. Thank you very much. It's a nice, good report. Nathan, I just very thorough report. Oh, I love it. I just wanted to make one comment that Mark gave me a call one day and said, "I think we need to come back to New Market again." And do, it, uh, and, and do it enrollment projection? Yeah. No, no, not about that. No, about completing the study. 
because I, I, I think they tried to be thorough and I think the building um, is not, is, is the high school and middle school high and, and senior high school is not the same as the elementary school when you, when you try to sort things, sort through things. And I appreciate the fact that he made the extra trip or two. Again, we thank you and your staff for a uh, great job. Great job. Thank you very much. And thank what you a so big much. help. You have a wonderful team here, so thanks very much. You have a wonderful team, too. You gentlemen have yeah. moved, us, thank uh, you. moved <laughs> us in the right direction immensely. We appreciate your efforts. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for public consumption, we're going to recess for the next seven or eight minutes and prepare for the board meeting at 7.